Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Pure Gold Mining. I am Darren LeBrenz, President and CEO, and uh, Pure Gold Mining, as uh, you can see on the, uh, the the presentation screen, is North America's newest gold producer with uh, first gold pour in December of last year. And so it's a very exciting time for Pure Gold, a time of transition as we move from, you know, rapidly from exploration stage company through development into operations. And, uh, and I, I just want to kind of state right at the outset here that this really is just the beginning. Uh, we're very much focused on growth. We've laid out a fairly ambitious growth uh, strategy that uh, looks to double production in the next three to five years. And so as I walk through the presentation, I want to leave you with, uh, you know, some some real fundamental understanding of the Pure Gold story. We are, we're in Red Lake. Uh, it's a storied district with 100 years of mining, uh, high-grade gold production. Uh, this deposit has real size. And uh, I think that'll be demonstrated as we walk through the presentation. And that scale leads to uh, real opportunities for growth. So with that introduction, I will uh, I'll jump right in. So again, uh, you know, it is very much a growth story. Uh, while we've laid out a uh, first, you know, phase one mine, if you will, that has a 12-year a mine life, we've poured first goal. We're, we're moving towards commercial production, which we anticipate uh, before the end of this quarter. Uh, it really is very much about growth, and uh, so I kind of want to walk you through that uh, the stages of growth as as we uh, as we see them uh, for the <clears throat> pure gold mine in in Red Lake, Ontario. So again, we're in Red Lake, and uh, as I said, Red Lake has a, has a very long history of of high grade gold mining with over a hundred years of continuous production. Uh, there's been over 30 million ounces of gold that's produced in Red Lake uh, over the course of that 100 year period, and it's some of the highest grade uh, gold mining that's, uh, that's occurred in North America with an average uh, head grade of approximately um, 16 grams per ton, as you can see on the screen here. Uh, that translates into over $50 billion of gold produced over that 100 years uh, using you know, metal prices very close to today. Uh, one thing that you typically see in these types of deposits, uh, and this is around the world, is a, they are long life. Uh, they're typically underground mines, high grade, and, and they tend to have very, very deep roots. And, and you can see that in the Red Lake area with the uh, Red Lake mine operation itself, uh, now mining at a depth of between two and a half kilometers and three kilometers below the Earth's surface. So uh, typically long strike extents, high grade, and, and very deep roots. Uh, today, there's two operating mines, one owned by uh, uh, Evolution Mining to the north of us called the Red Lake Mine, and, uh, and our own Pure Gold Mine, which is located on the south end of the camp. And, you know, geologically, when you look at this map, we've highlighted uh, a couple of trends with red dashed lines and, uh, and and they're virtually identical. And I think that's uh, something I want to carry as an understanding as we walk through this. Uh, they both straddle the boundary between the darker green rocks here, which we call the bomber assemblage that hosts, you know, 95% of the 30 million ounces that have come out of Red Lake. And, and those contact between the dark green and the lighter green is an important conduit for the fluids that, uh, that deposited the gold deposits across the Red Lake area. And so we straddle the same contact. Uh, our rocks are the same age. The uh, style of mineralization is very similar and really they are very, very um, similar uh, terrains and, uh, and as such similar deposits. So this really lays out the uh, the phase growth strategy in, in kind of a, a easy formatted array to read the, uh, the various phases. Phase one really was a snapshot. It was the feasibility study that was completed in uh, February of 2019. That feasibility study laid out a 12-year mine life uh, design of about 80,000 ounces a year, of course, over the course of that 12 years, with a uh, mill throughput rate of 800 tons per day. Uh, we do see growth through that, and I'll, I'll show that here as we walk through uh, with the uh, each successive year over the first five years showing improved uh, production, improved grade, and lowering all in sustaining costs. As we started to build out our, our phase one mine, we recognized opportunities to uh, to demonstrate near-term growth. And so that's laid out here as phase two. These really are optimizations of the initial mine with um, an opportunity here to push throughput from the underground and push more, um, more ore through the mill. And to that end, we've made some pretty significant changes to the, uh, the phase one feasibility mine plan. 
Uh, in the underground, we've opened up or widened the uh, the ramp openings that we're using to access the ore body. Uh, we've added a second ramp, and so this is new as part of phase two. This uh, this east ramp, as we call it, uh, allows us to access the uh, northeast part of the ore body uh, much earlier than planned in the feasibility study. And being driven at five meters by five meters allows an opportunity to draw more material. You can almost see it as a, a second mining center, uh, again, allowing us to push the, uh, the underground and, and draw more tons. In the mill, <clears throat> uh, which is performing very well, uh, we saw an opportunity to move from 800 tons per day to 1,000 tons per day with a uh, very limited amount of capital. And effectively, all we're doing here is replacing some screens within part of the, uh, the circuit, the CIP circuit, uh, putting a new trommel screen on the back end of the sag mill, and we believe that those additions will allow us to push above 800 tons per day. And so we, we have a very near-term opportunity here to grow our, our production by up to 25% through the, uh, the optimizations that we've completed or that we are completing, uh, sorry, in the both the underground and within the mill. Phase three is looking at a, a more, uh, you know, a larger expansion. Uh, this is drawing in the satellite deposits, discoveries that we've made over the last three to five years, and uh, and looking to do so through an expansion of the plant. And really, over the course of phase one through phase three, we're targeting a, a doubling of production over the next three to five years. Finally, I, I do want to emphasize that uh, you know beyond that, those three phases are really designed around what we already know, what we've already discovered. But uh, across the seven kilometer long system that we've uh, defined through drilling to date, uh, to depth, uh, we believe there's a there's a tremendous opportunity here for future growth, and and really that is that is the opportunity to dream big. That uh, that really lays out that game changing exploration potential, things that we've seen. In, in the resources and reserves to date, uh, but we see a real opportunity for, for continued uh, discovery. And, and that is an important part of our story as well. Uh, so I do wanna um, uh, just kind of lay out the, uh, the, um, the next part of our, our, our plan here, which really talking about the, uh, the ramp up to commercial production. Uh, but before I do so, I, I really want to emphasize that we are just getting started here. As I said, uh, we've got before <coughs> that occurred in December, uh, commercial production, which uh, which we are targeting towards the end of Q2. And uh, really, at the end of the day, we've laid out a 12-year mine life, but we see ourselves as being here, developing a multi multi-generational company, one that'll be here for decades. And you know, we've got uh, you know our mission here really is to uh, have a net positive impact on the our people. On the um, on the community, on our for our shareholders, and at the end of the day, for uh, for the environment, and, and and do so over decades. So, as I say here, we really are here for a long time. So, these are the numbers from the phase one mine, and uh, you know, I've, I've talked about some of these. It's a twelve-year mine life. Uh, we have a one million ounce reserves at nine grams per ton. This comes from a broader two point one million ounce indicated resource at about nine grams. Uh, there's a further half million ounces of inferred material. So you can see there are significant resources outside of the, uh, the mineral reserves. And, and, and that's part of the, uh, the phase three expansion when we look to the, the future expansion of the mill and drawing in some of those satellite discoveries and, and some of the down dip uh, potential inferred resources that we see within the, uh, within the, um, the deposit itself. Uh, built into the deposit, there is a natural growth profile. Uh, we start out uh, fairly light from a grade in production profile, but uh, you can see here over the first five years, bottom left, we have an annualized uh, growth of uh, production of 21%. So growing production 21% year over year for the first five years. And that's really driven by grade uh, as we transition from six to seven grams year one into uh, 13.7 grams by year five. Uh, that's being driven by the, the grade profile of the deposit. So simply put, as we move deeper in the mine, we start to see higher and higher grades, and, and this is really culminates in the, the eight zone, which I'll touch on later, which is the highest grade component of our, our mineral resource. That increasing grade, increasing production profile drives a, uh, a reduction in all in sustaining costs. And so uh, from year one to year five, we'll see a 44% reduction in all in sustaining costs. And that really is driven by the grade profile. This is all <clears throat> for the, the phase one mine, this does not take into account any kind of changes or phase two optimizations. Uh, it really is just a straight reflection of the feasibility study. And so we do see an opportunity to, to grow production uh, as we've talked about through the, uh, the, the phase strategy that we've laid out. 
So I talked a little bit about the ramp up uh, that we're going through right now on site. Uh, we started production late last year with our first gold pour on December 29th, and uh, we've been pouring gold every week since uh, since that time. Uh, the mill is performing beautifully. Uh, we can see on the left hand side the uh, the throughput as we started in January with the lower throughput as we we're ironing out the kinks as you do in a, in a in a startup. Uh, we brought it up to uh, in March uh, a peak production of just shy of 900 tons per day. So demonstrating that we can uh, we can achieve the uh, design throughput for the mill. And uh, over the course of May, we're operating about a five to 600 ton per day rate and uh, we're ramping up towards 800 tons per day as we speak with uh, potential to exceed that in, in the second half. Really the, uh, the mill now has been optimized to what we're delivering from the underground and we're ramping them up in concert towards that uh, nameplate capacity. Our recoveries have been absolutely fantastic. Uh, we can see on the right-hand side that uh, in April we achieved 97.3% recovery. And this really isn't a surprise to us. It's a, uh, you know, from a, a geological or metallurgical perspective, it is a very simple deposit. Uh, we do see a lot of free gold. And, uh, and so as such, it recovers very well. In fact, within our mill, we have a, a gravity gold, uh, which takes uh, advantage of the, the free nature of the gold. And uh, we do recover about 50% of the gold in our gravity circuit. So that uh, that really reflects back on, on those strong recoveries and the strong performance that we're seeing in the mill itself. With the mill ramped up to, uh, to where we expect it to be, uh, the focus over Q2 has been ramping up the mine. Uh, so the underground, and you can see some of that uh, laid out on the screen here uh, from a uh, development heading perspective, which really provides the opportunity for, for flexibility uh, to, to drive the, the delivery of high grade material from underground. We've gone from, you know, the end of Q1, 12 active headings, uh, 17 in May. And by the end of this quarter, we're looking at about 26 active headings. And, and again, that gives you real flexibility uh, and, and allows you to efficiently deliver high grade from the underground. We are currently mining uh, in, in a variety of, uh, of different methodologies. So we have active long hole mining that is underway. Uh, we have uh, today two mechanized cut and fill stopes that are that are currently active, and uh, we've got a number of development headings as we continue to um, build out and advance uh, future long haul stopes or, or cut and fill stopes, and so that is is progressing quite well. Uh, we are actively mining ore from both the main ramp and the east ramp now, and uh, and that again gives us uh, additional flexibility, and that's uh, translated across in grade uh, as we're focused in Q1 was uh, ramping up the mill and, and demonstrating that uh, we could reach nameplate capacity. We're, we're putting through a combination effectively of high grade from underground and low grade pre-production uh, development stockpiles that translated into a grade of around three grams per ton. April, we pushed to 4.3. By mid-May, we're at 6.3. And we're targeting you know, 60 to 70,000 tons over a three month period at a grade of six to seven grams. Uh, so that kind of gives you a snapshot of, of where we're going. And, and that really reflects upon the, uh, the opening up of, of the underground. Uh, looking at uh, share price performance, uh, you can see a graph here, and, and really this reflects the phase that we're in. Uh, as we as we constructed the mine and uh, announced first gold pour, we entered the ramp up phase, and with the uh, the ramp up occurring over the first half of the year, we've seen the uh, the share price uh, decline. I really think this is a an, a, a real opportunity uh, as we uh, as we reach um, or come close towards uh, commercial production. And as I've laid out, this is a mine that uh, shows growth in its grade profile as we move deeper down. That'll reflect in the uh, production profile or reflect in the, uh, the, the costs as we move forward. Uh, we do see near-term opportunities for growth here with the uh, improvements in the mill that, uh, that we're implementing in early Q3. And uh, as we continue to open up the underground and drive that flexibility with active uh, development headings, uh, we see that uh, the underground uh, growing to match the improved production through the mill. And so that'll give us that uh, real near-term organic growth from within the existing reserves. A uh, longer term, as we talked about, we are driving towards the, uh, the staged expansion and, and looking for, for um, um, you know, effectively a doubling production over the next three to five years. So I, I think this really is a good entry point as we, as we kind of round out the uh, the ramp up period. Uh, this just touches on what we're doing in the mill itself. Uh, these interstage screens within the CIP circuit uh, shown in the top right and the sag mill trommel screen, that removes the, the bottleneck uh, that we see to push above 800 tons per day. Uh, we're getting very good uh, 
uh, performance out of a grinding circuit and um, the gravity circuit is performing well. Uh, the leach tanks and the CIP circuit are sufficient to, to push through more material. So with those bottlenecks addressed in, uh, in Q3, we do see the, uh, the potential here to move um, continuously above 800 tons per day. Underground, I've talked about some of the initiatives uh, to, to drive phase two expansion uh, with the east ramp shown here in, <clears throat> in yellow. Uh, what we're showing here in blue is uh, development shown in, or development completed in 2020. The yellow is planned development for 2021. You can see the two ramps providing opportunities to draw material from two centers. And then life of mine, you can see the, uh, the, 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 the ramp development over the course of 12 years shown in gray. Uh, we are accelerating our main ramp. Uh, we raised uh, 17 and a quarter million in uh, flow through funding that is uh, earmarked entirely for, for capital development. And so that'll allow us to uh, drive that ramp. And, uh, and, uh, and that really provides again, an opportunity to, to open up the mine, to get deeper, faster, to access some of that high grade material, to accelerate the, uh, the mine plan, if you will, and ultimately get us to our, our high grade eight zone, which is shown at the bottom of the screen here uh, quicker. Uh, to drive that uh, the, that high grade um, high production part of the uh, the resource and reserves. So I touch a little bit about phase three now. Uh, what you're looking at here is a um, a, a map showing you know some um, potential future development at some of our satellite deposits, and so they're labeled here as Fork Wedge Russet South. Uh, these are these are discoveries that we've made over the last several years. These are part of our existing resource. And, uh, and they are open for expansion. We've continued to drill them since the, uh, the resource was first stated in, in 2019. Uh, we do intend to recommence technical studies to look at these as part of a phase three expansion. And uh, so you can conceptually see the, the thinking here is uh, we've got a centralized milling operation. Uh, we've got the phase one, phase two mine that uh, is currently in operation. And uh, in, in three to five years, we're drawing in rusted fork and wedge resources. Uh, there are separate mining centers and materials being uh, hauled back to the existing milling facility and done through, through a plant expansion. So <clears throat> we do have uh, significant opportunities here in within the resources we've already discovered. But uh, you know, I, again, I wanna draw us back to where we are. We're in Red Lake, Ontario, 30 million ounces of uh, historic high grade gold production. Uh, we own 47 square kilometers of, um, of, of uh, prime Red Lake real estate. And uh, we see a real opportunity here for future discovery. And, and some of that is laid out here with some of the uh, areas that we've been drilling over the course of the last uh, six months. Uh, things like uh, Gap, Treasure Box, Number One Vein, um, Durlac, these are not part of our current resources, uh, but uh, we've made significant inroads here towards, uh, you know, the, the, the potential for future discovery with some of the results that we put out. Our wedge itself is on the south end of our seven kilometer trend uh, that we have uh, laid out here from Durlac through the main mine, the fork deposit, the wedge deposit, and, and these are all part of the same mineral system. Uh, wedge continues to grow and uh, earlier this year we announced a 500 meter step out uh, with 16.6 grams over five meters continuing to highlight the potential of that particular zone and so what i'm doing here is i want to really lay out that that uh, the red lake nature or um you know the the real dream big opportunity that we see at uh, the pure gold mine and i'm doing so by by highlighting the uh, the two operating mines here side by side on the right hand side, we can see the Red Lake mine operation. Uh, that Red Lake mine operation is, uh, it's again owned by Evolution Mining. It was uh, previously plastered on Gold Corp and transacted through to Evolution. Uh, mining there has been continuous for seven and a half uh, uh, decades, uh, starting in 1945. And over the course of that time, they've mined from surface down to a depth of uh, two and a half kilometers and, and it continues to grow. Uh, on the left-hand side, uh, we've got our own pure gold mine, and what we see here is uh, a similar footprinted surface. Uh, but one of the key differences, obviously, is that uh, our deposit today is defined from surface down to a depth of about 1,200 meters, so only about half of the depth of the uh, the Red Lake mine operation on the right. Um, but having said that, as we show in the the next image here, we have uh, a strong belief or conviction that our our deposit itself will continue to persist to depth. And why is that? Well, first of all, it's the nature of these deposits. They, they do typically have very deep roots, uh, but that wouldn't be enough uh, on its own. Uh, what we do have there shown on the screen is uh, a drill hole, AD1101. 
uh, intersects the deposit at 2.1 kilometer depth. Uh, importantly, when you look at the rock, it's it's identical in every respect. It's got the same alteration, uh, the same style of mineralization, returned about a half ounce over two meters. It, it is part of the deposit. And that gives us that real high degree of confidence that uh, our, our mine will continue to precip to, to depth, much like the Red Lake mine operation. And to me, this is this is this is the real prize. Uh, when you look at the top 1,200 meters, uh, there's a historic mine on our property that produced two and a half million ounces. I've uh, got 2.1 million ounces in indicated resource, half million ounces of inferred, all in that top top 1,200 meters. And so, you know, you, you can do the math and think about the next kilometer, and that potential is very real for for significant growth in resources and uh, and opportunities to continue to mine for for a very long time. Importantly, what you can see uh, again on the right hand side is the what, what was called the the HGZ, the, the high grade zone discovery at the Red Lake mine operation. This was made by Gold Corp in the mid 1990s. And and that really was a disruptive, uh, transformative discovery for Gold Corp. It was it was a discovery that really took Gold Corp on a trajectory from a single asset mining company producing 50,000 ounces per year in, in the Red Lake area up to uh, at its peak. A, uh, uh, a multi-billion dollar company with uh, operations around the world. And that was driven by the strong cash flow out of that uh, that high grade zone discovery. It starts where the uh, red circle uh, is shown here and then persists down to depth along the uh, to the deepest part of the mine. Over the course of the uh, the last 20 years, it's produced about 6 million ounces at a grade that uh, well exceeds uh, an ounce per ton. And, and so that's uh, a truly exciting part of the, uh, the, the Red Lake history, if you will. Uh, across on the left-hand side, we have something that we call the eight zone, and uh, the eight zone is is uh, part of the deposit that we're extremely excited about. Uh, you can see another version of the long section here showing where the eight zone sits. Uh, here I've shown every drill hole that intercepts our, our deposit uh, along that trend, and it's color-coded by grade with the, uh, the pink dots being 10 grams per ton or higher. The eight zone sits in the same geologic environment as that hybrid zone. It's in the foot wall of the main deposit. It's along a folded mafic, ultra mafic contact, uh, much the same as the hybrid zone. And you can see some of the drill hole results uh, that uh, have come out of that zone historically. 4.3 meters at 466 grams per ton, 5.5 at 342, 8.2 at 120. I mean, these are tremendous results that uh, I think really highlight the importance of this particular zone. Uh, that's translated into a, a current indicated resource of uh, 301,000 ounces at a grade of 20.5 grams per ton. And uh, importantly, it's uh, it's completely open for, for expansion. You can see that there's there's uh, virtually no drilling uh, above it and there is no drilling below the 8th zone. And so we're really excited about getting underground and, and, and testing the 8th zone. Uh, to that end, uh, we talked about accelerating the main ramp. Uh, by the end of this year, we believe we'll be deep enough to set up an exploration heading to start doing the first initial testing from underground of the eight zone, <clears throat> all in advance of, uh, of mining of that important zone, which, uh, uh, which we are also trying to accelerate through our, our ramp development. So that potential for down plunge extension over the next kilometer plus, uh, plus the, uh, the, the highlights of things like the eight zone are are, uh, are part of that real future growth story that uh, that have us uh, truly excited. So you can see 2021 is a, uh, a year that uh, continues to be full of catalysts. Uh, we are, uh, as I said, ramping up the underground here towards commercial production by, by the end of this quarter. Uh, ongoing exploration, both underground to grow our, our uh, resources and reserves in close proximity to our existing development, as well as later uh, targeting of the eight zone from underground is uh, is an important part of uh, as the story as we move through this year. Uh, from a surface perspective, we've been actively drilling, um, growing some of our satellite discoveries, and uh, toward the end of this year, we look to resume that drilling and uh, and really start to to build out that longer term growth potential. Uh, also, in the near term, as we move into Q3, you can look forward to a um, um, some of the uh, implementation of the operational improvements within the mill to drive that potential to push above 800 tons per day. And uh, and finally, uh, we are looking to update our mineral resource geological modeling is is ongoing and that uh, is is expected to come out in Q3. So you can look forward to an update to our mineral resource, which will uh, incorporate not just the, uh, the 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 mine itself, but also the satellite discoveries where we've completed additional drilling since the the last update of our mineral resources. So as you can see through the uh, you know the uh, the slides that we've walked through in the introduction to pure gold mine, uh, we're we're really in an exciting phase of our our, our development. Uh, we've got uh, 
Um, first gold uh, transition in operations. Uh, we're approaching commercial production. We've got an inherent growth profile in the uh, the next five years of our operation through a grade uh, improvement as we move to depth and continue to open up the underground. Uh, we've got near-term plans to to show um, more significant growth through our phase three expansion, incorporating the satellite deposits. And then longer term, we've got uh, uh, that real pronounced depth uh, potential across seven kilometers of strike extent of our mineral system and the opportunity for disruptive transformative uh, discovery through zones like the eight zone, which really are in a class of their own. This we're all doing in the backdrop of, uh, of, of the Red Lake mine, operation, uh, mine operations in the Red Lake area. Uh, again, we have a real commitment to the communities that we work in and, uh, and to the environment. We're in a relatively unique position here that this is a brownfield site. Uh, there's a historic mining operation on, on our ground that uh, operated for 36 years. And we really are in a position to improve the environment over, over that, uh, that legacy mine. And to that end, we've, we've made significant improvements through the reclamation reclama reclamation of, uh, of some of those historic structures, uh, improvements to the tailings management facility, implementation of a brand new water treatment plant designed to, uh, to improve the waters. And, uh, and, and all of that work is really designed to, at the end of the day, to, to improve the environment and, and leave it as, as it was prior to the, uh, the mining in the area. Uh, so we really are committed to, to building a better mine. Uh, there are significant improvements over the course of the mine that we'll look to implement. Uh, including the uh, implementation of a uh, electric fleet underground to transition from diesel equipment through our trucks and scoops into electric equipment, which will reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, and again, all that's uh, really designed to, to improve the environment. Uh, from a uh, <clears throat> sustainability and, and, and community presence perspective, uh, we've got a strong agreement with uh, First Nations, it establishes them as, in, establishes them as partners in the project. And, uh, and we're really working with the communities here to, to be a good corporate partner within the Red Lake area. Uh, First Nations themselves, Laxville and Wabaskang, we're really excited to be working with them to provide opportunities for, for education and training, uh, job opportunities, contracting opportunities, and, and to welcome them as shareholders in Pure Gold and, uh, and with financial participation in, in the mine itself. Uh, we do have some key strategic shareholders that I'd like to highlight here. Uh, that really is a um, you know a, a real strong statement of support for the work that we've done and the team in place here. Um, Eric Sprott is a 12% shareholder. Uh, two senior producers, Anglo Gold Ashanti Newmont are shareholders. Anglo Gold holds holds about 15% of the uh, issued and outstanding Pure Gold shares, and uh, and Newmont's in you know as as far as we can tell is is in around that uh, 3% range. So. A real strong vote of affirmation and support from from these three uh, titans or, or producers. Uh, the team we have in place is, uh, I would say, one of the strongest with respect to uh, understanding Red Lake geology. Uh, myself, I was chief geologist at the uh, the Campbell Mine, part of the Red Lake Mine operations, and in, in the uh, in the mid 1990s, and uh, and that's uh, that that experience resonates through the board and management team. Um, Many of us have deep Red Lake experience and, and that translates into that strong understanding. Uh, the operational team is, uh, is really come together nicely and uh, we've got about 300 employees engaged now at the, uh, at the Pure Gold Mine. So finally today we sit with about uh, 23 million in cash in place. Uh, we've got uh, seven and a half million US of undrawn debt and, uh, and we're, we're coming towards commercial production. So we're in a fairly good position as uh, we, we start that growth path that have laid out. And, uh, and you can see uh, the, the universe of coverage that we have uh, across the right hand side. So uh, with that, uh, you know, in conclusion, uh, we're, we're moving into uh, commercial production. We've got a, a strong uh, organic growth that we'll see over the next uh, three to four years as we continue to push that grade profile as we move downward as we implement our phase two optimizations to drive us above 800 tons per day. Longer term, we're really targeting that uh, material enhancement or expansion through the uh, through the implementation of our satellite deposits and uh, and continued exploration to really flush out that uh, that potential across the 47 square kilometers that we hold in Red Lake. So. Uh, with that, uh, I'll open it up for questions. Thank you so much, Darren. That was a great presentation. A lot of uh, highlights to cover. We do have some wonderful questions lined up here. I'm going to start off with uh, a very clear question, uh, which says, can you discuss the eight zone a little more? And what uh, do those high grades do for the company? 
Yeah, the eighth zone, I mean, you can sense my enthusiasm and excitement as I was talking about the eighth zone. It, it really does remind me of some of the high grade discoveries that, uh, you know, we've seen around the world in, in brownfield sites. Uh, the Red Lake Mine itself is a classic example, you know, mm. as I described that high grade zone discovery took it from, you know, Gold Corp from a 50,000 ounce producer in Red Lake to, to 600,000 ounces per year. And that was done without changing the mill. That was mm. simply by the grade that they saw in the high grade zone. We look at the eighth zone and uh, where it sits, the uh, the nature of it sitting along contact of, uh, you know, I call it a mafic or ultramafic contact. It's the same geological environment as the uh, as the high grade zone. It's open for expansion. The drill holes that we showed, that provides an opportunity for, for growth, um, growth in grade, lower costs. And uh, the fact that it's open for expansion just really excites me. Uh, so it's it's a tremendous opportunity for, for, for Pure Gold and, and our shareholders. Terrific. I can hear the enthusiasm. Thank you for that. Next question would be, what type of production numbers could we be looking at here with combined production from both above and underground and expanded mill uh, fed by two ramps and rehabilitation, uh, sorry, rehabilitated shaft? Yeah. So when we look at the, um, you know, the, the various phases that I've laid out, phase one mine feasibility study, the real driver there was uh, to get into production, to keep capital low. We saw our, our, an immediate opportunity to, to expand or or realize some organic growth uh, through relatively minor changes to the mine plan and to the mill itself. And so we are implementing those. We added a second ramp. We've increased the size of our ramp openings. Uh, we've got a shaft that's being rehabilitated as we speak. And that really allows you to think about it as uh, three separate areas to draw material from. The, the main ramp, the east ramp, uh, skipping up the, uh, the shaft itself. And that allows you to expand production from underground uh, that expansion um, now can be brought into a mill where through minor additions, change of screens, uh, we think we can push up to a thousand tons per day. And so where we had a phase one mine plan that had, uh, you know, uh, peak production of 125,000 ounces a year, um, 12 year mine life, we see an opportunity to accelerate that 25% uh, improvement through some of these uh, additions that, uh, that really will translate into a near perm improvement in, in production profile and uh, unit cost reductions. Great, thank you for that. Uh, another technical question uh, we have here is around, uh, is surface exploration still paused? Uh, surface exploration right now is paused. We're focused on the underground where we have uh, uh, at any given time, two to three rigs operating. Uh, we do have a budget laid out for surface exploration and we will be resuming it uh, after we reach commercial production. So you can anticipate that resuming later in the year. Okay, great. Thank you, Darren. Uh, also a question here, what has been Pure Gold Mining's secret to finding reserves and resources where others could not? I think one of the key things here really is um, uh, focus. Uh, when we acquired this project, uh, we assembled a team that, uh, you know, really, as I, as I stated earlier, has um, tremendous Red Lake experience. Uh, you know, many of us cut our teeth in the Red Lake area. And so we were able to apply that experience working at the, you know, the Red Lake mine operation, exploring in the camp and, uh, and really bring modern thinking, modern, modern techniques onto the property and, and, uh, and take a holistic approach. So step back, look at the, mm -hmm. uh, look at the whole project area and try and tie it all together. That, uh, that understanding drove a real understanding of what was controlling mineralization at the, uh, the historic mine. We were able to apply that understanding to trace the structures across the uh across the footprint of our, our project and it translated into discoveries at fork at wedge at russet south and uh, mm -hmm. and 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 again i think that the growth is really just beginning great to hear that thank you for that uh, another question here from nick in one of your latest reports you mentioned exploring acquisitions can you expand on what you're looking for and any potential and can we expect any new drill resorts over the coming weeks and months yeah, so our, our focus obviously is on the operation itself right now. Now, obviously, we keep a close eye on on what's happening in the Red Lake area, and we'll con continue to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, when I look at uh, Pure Gold moving forward, uh, we've got such a tremendous uh, growth platform in front of us with respect to the immediate improvements on on the underground and the mine, uh, the, the the phase three expansion through incorporation of satellite pauses, the continued exploration at depth across the seven kilometer trend. Uh, that will be the focus, but obviously we're going to continue to look at other opportunities. And at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're here to, to, to grow pure gold, to grow value for shareholders and, and do it in the most uh, capital efficient manner. So, so we will continue to do that. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, another question here. Can you talk about what kind of positive impact positive mill recoveries can have on a project? 
Well, we all know what can go wrong if you don't get recoveries. I mean, you're, you're losing gold. And uh, we've seen other operations where, where you know, gold can get locked up in, in various other minerals, uh, be it pyrite or otherwise. And, and it becomes very, very problematic because at the end of the day, gold is your revenue. Hmm. And so if you're losing 10% through your recovery, you're going to lose 10% of your revenue. Uh, the ability to, to achieve 97 plus percent recovery means that it's not a worry for us. Uh, we're able to 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 really process and and uh, and pour the gold that we uh, we pull out of the underground, and so it's uh, it just drives stronger revenue profiles and, and removes that uh, that risk out of the uh, the mining project. Great to hear. <clears throat> Another technical question here, Darren: Is pure gold on a power grid, uh, and also what's the infrastructure like nearby? We are. We're in the, the community of Red Lake. This is a very strong mining community with about uh, you know four to five thousand residents. You know, hundred years of mining, as I've talked about. So there's a there's a the long experience where you've got uh, individuals whose fathers and grandfathers have worked at the mines. We certainly benefit from that. Uh, we also benefit from being close to services, service providers, uh, and being on the grid itself. And so we are in the uh, the, the, the Ontario grid. Um, most of the power power is derived from the uh, Ear Falls. Um, hydroelectric station there so it's hydroelectric power so very clean power okay. and uh, and that gives us the capacity to keep our our power costs lower but uh, but also drive you know again the opportunity for expansion as well great thank you for that another question here from brian do you expect commercialization by july the first uh we're certainly targeting commercial production by the end of this quarter okay great to know that thank you <clears throat> in terms of other uh exploration in the area um what drew you first to red to red Lake? I think it's our experience. You know, I, I, I stepped back to myself when I was a younger version of myself, <laughs> uh, mid 1990s, uh, came across to the Red Lake area, uh, initially as a beach geologist underground at the, the Red Lake mine and uh, transitioned into, into chief geologist. And at the time, I don't think I fully appreciated uh, how important grade was. And, mm. uh, you know, I, I, I like to talk about various stories, uh, you know, that at the time, the Campbell mine, where I worked at, the one half of the Red Lake mine operation was owned by Placer Dome. It was, you know, one of a dozen or so operations around the world, and it was a real cash generator. Uh, when Placer was having a tough quarter, they would call up Campbell Mine and say, "Hey, can you can you go mine something out of the L zone?" And uh, and it would kind of have an impact on a multi, you know, multinational corporation from a cash flow perspective. And and so grade really is important. Uh, the opportunity to surgically mine to keep your footprint low for that disruptive potential of discovery, all of that uh, I find really exciting. And so that drew us back collectively into the Red Lake area. Great. Thank you for that. I hear your passion for the industry as well, which is always a good sign. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I love about these uh, these seminars, these, these webinars, are the access to what happens inside the boardroom of a company. So for those of us, those of us outside of Pure Gold Mining, what's being talked about day to day, week to week right now, but the most exciting opportunities coming down the pipe? I think what um, you know, what I really like about the Pure Gold board and management team uh, is, is very engaged. And so, you know, there's two types of boards. Some are fairly passive and, and there's some boards that are very active. And I would say that we have a very active board and a board with tremendous skill sets. Uh, mm -hmm. You look at, uh, uh, we've, we've pretty much addressed everything through um, capital markets expertise, strong strategic thinking, discovery, transaction, uh, merger history, um, mm -hmm. engineering, uh, technical expertise. And, and so, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, the board is engaged. We're talking about how we can improve, how we can grow. And, and that growth is, uh, you know, again, it's, it's organic, but keeping a finger on the pulse of the industry as well and looking for opportunities uh, outside of, of Pure Gold as well. So um, it's, it's fantastic to work with a group of individuals that I do. Fantastic. It's always great to hear the inside view of who the team is and what they're, what they're up to. Uh, I always go to this question often, uh, Darren, around those of us that are new investors when it comes to the experience of uh, dabbling in the, in the world of gold in that realm. If you were to meet somebody in a coffee shop who has never dabbled in this territory at all, how do you share about the industry and the potential of what's happening in that realm? Yeah, it's it's a I mean it's a really exciting industry, and uh, clearly I've been in it for you know my entire thirty year career, and and um, I, I think one of the things is you gotta you gotta look to people. You know, I've talked about our board, I've talked about our management team. Um, people develop a track record, and uh, you can see in our uh, in our board, uh, and people say this a lot, but we really do have a strong track record of generating value for shareholders. I think that's important. Uh, the skill sets that we bring to the team. Uh, we've done it before. We've, we've made discoveries in Red Lake. You know, collectively, we've we've discovered mines, we've built mines, we've operated mines. I think that's all really important. 
Uh, then you want to look at the other parts of the risk profile. Where's where's the project located? Well, you know, obviously being in Canada, being in Red Lake, uh, this mm -hmm. is an area that uh, where mining is well understood, it's embraced and uh, has a strong regulatory environment. I think that's really important. Um, grade gives you opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. Something that we sought out, uh, the ability to um, to to drive that strong you know production uh, discovery potential, uh, lower costs through through high grade. I think that's extremely important. And then understanding where you're at in the cycle. I think we've really been counter cyclical. Uh, you know, we were active when, when I would say it was a very tough time in the industry, tough to raise money. Uh, we were able to do so because of the team and the location. Uh, we we're actively discovering new deposits uh, on our property, uh, mm -hmm. growing the resources. Uh, we brought it into production when, when gold was in a bit of a lull. And I frankly think we've timed it perfectly as we poured our first gold. Gold was pushing $2,000 an ounce. Hmm. 2300 Canadian and uh, and that generates real opportunities for growth as well so you got to know the people the location um, um, and uh, and that's that's a good part of the success right there and then get timing right at the end of the day beautiful thank you for that I'd like to turn focus a little bit a lot of us are looking to invest in a conscious way today Darren and, and you mentioned uh, quite beautifully about the interaction with First Nations and there's a there's an ecosystem there's an infrastructure and a connection to community can you tell me a little bit about the approach of the company working <clears throat> excuse me with that <clears throat> with that community and uh, and how that's moved the company forward and also brought benefit to the community yeah it's a really unique um, again situation in that uh, relic does have such a long history there's a hundred years of of, of, of production in the area. Um, it's, it's in a community of four to 5,000 individuals, as I said, and these, 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 uh, these individuals for the most part draw their lifeblood out of the mining industry. So it's, you know, from a, from that perspective, it's, it's well embraced to begin with. Uh, but, you know, when we acquired the, uh, the project, uh, one of the first things we did was, was go out to, and meet uh, with grand council. So this is the, uh, uh, the the, um, the National Abbey people in Northwest Ontario to, to ask them for guidance for who we should be communicating with. Uh, mm. been fairly proactive in that front, uh, culminated in a project agreement in 2019 that I'm quite proud of. It it um, it really emphasizes uh, you know training initiatives, education initiatives, uh, support for environmental monitoring, uh, job opportunities, contracting opportunities, and then they establish them as shareholders and and partners in the projects and. And, and I think that's really important uh, from a community perspective. Uh, we're doing our best to be transparent about the work that we're doing, uh, communicating and uh, and making sure that we, we pres preserve the values of the community while we, we uh, embark on our own growth initiatives. Fantastic. Thank you very much for that. I have a, a question from Greg on more on the business side. You have a lot of shares outstanding for a smaller company. Do you anticipate a share consolidation in the future? It's certainly not, not something that we're talking about right now. Uh, obviously, our, our our, our focus is on creating value and uh, and seeing growth in, in value of those shares that are that are shouldn't outstanding, but uh, it's not something that we're currently entertaining. Fair enough. Thank you. I always love when we find executives, Darren, like yourself, that uh, are relatable, approachable, and speak from the heart about uh, something they're very passionate about. Is there anything else about the company or, or key highlights you'd like to share before we wrap up today? No, I really appreciate your time, Mark, and everyone who's listening in. Uh, again, you know, we we are just getting started here. Uh, we've got a uh, brand new operation. Uh, we're, we're ramping up to commercial production. Uh, we've got inherent growth over the next two to three years, both through the implementation of some of the optimizations in the underground and within the mill itself, but also in the grade profile as we move deeper down. Beyond that, uh, we see real near-term opportunities for growth with the resources we've already discovered and that tremendous discovery potential. So it's, it's, it's an exciting time for Pure Gold and I'm really excited to, to be where I am today. I hear that. Thank you very much for speaking so openly and uh, I'll thank you for your time and all our viewers are very appreciative as well. And uh, we'll look forward to more conversations as things evolve for the company. Thanks for your time today. Thank you.